Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you exactly why a Bitcoin bull run should be starting in the next 12 months. That's right, by the end of quarter one, 2020, the beginnings and the confirmation of a beginning of a new Bitcoin bull run should have come in based on all of the technical analysis that I have seen and that many other analysts have seen that should be coming relatively soon. I mean, a year isn't very long in the grand scheme of things, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all of the different technical indicators, all the different chart formations, all the percentage returns from all-time high data, all of the things, all of the technicals, all of the data that leads me to believe that a Bitcoin bull run will be starting in the next year. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, definitely consider dropping a like and hitting that subscribe button. And also guys, in today's video, I have some big news. I'll be talking about this more at the end of the video, but our new chat group, the first cohort has launched. If you're interested in seeing what we have to offer, click the link in the description down below. You can come here and read the sales page. This is going to be a, a community group where I and the people in the group chat about pretty much anything. We'll be talking about trades, technical analysis, analysis news. We'll be teaching each other and learning from each other. I'm really looking forward to this. More on that at the end of the video. But without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to be doing this video on the Brave New Coin Liquid Index for Bitcoin because this is an index for Bitcoin that shows pretty much the entire history of Bitcoin going all the way back here to 2010. We see price action all the way back here from in 2010. Very interesting to see what Bitcoin was doing back over here, trading around, you know, seven cents. I think that's a little overbought in my opinion. I think Bitcoin's going to crash from there. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into this, guys. Of course, we need to do a little bit of a hist uh, historical recap, and then we can start analyzing these markets. Now, I've talked about a lot of the things I'm going to discuss in today's video before, but I don't think there's a video on the channel where I comprehensively go over all of the technical indicators and everything that predicts a Bitcoin bull run in the next year. So I want to go ahead and put all of that into one video so that you guys have a reference that you can go back and you can say, okay, well, here's XYZ, ABCDEFG indicator and what it means for Bitcoin. So I'm going to try and go over all of them in today's video. For our history lesson, though, to start the video off with, of course, we want to start back over here in 2013 when Bitcoin ran all the way up here to $1,200. That was the all-time high at the time, and it was quite the all-time high. Bitcoin rallied very quickly, and it rallied very, very strong. Bitcoin rallied about 800% in the span of under six months. Bitcoin was looking very healthy at the time, of course. In fact, it was under three months. This began in October. Anyway, from there, Bitcoin ran up to $1,200. And of course, that was a little bit overbought. You might say that that was a little bit overbought. If we come out to the weekly chart and we look at the RSI, I think you're going to see that the RSI was a little overbought. You know, maybe that's just me talking. Maybe 96 isn't overbought, whatever country you're from. But in my opinion, that was a little overbought. And it seems that the rest of the market agreed because Bitcoin started retracing from $1,200 and pulled all the way back down here to around $200, between $150 and $200 depending on the exchange you look at and depending on what you call the exact bottom. We'll call it about a, about $200 for the sake of simplicity for today's video. From there, Bitcoin started a new bull run over here about October 15th. I'll show you exactly the single day that Bitcoin started this bull run in a second. And from there, Bitcoin rallied all the way up to $20,000. Of course, you guys, this is starting to get into the time period where many of the people watching this video were probably here for this part of the history. I know I was. I watched Bitcoin hit $20,000 live and I was very concerned and you guys can see why. If you go back and you watch the very first video on this channel, actually, it was posted about a month before we hit all-time high. It was posted right over here. And the title of that video is none other than Is Bitcoin Overextended? Because I was worried about this kind of thing happening. And then, of course, you know, this kind of thing happening, which did end up, you know, happen. And Bitcoin from $20,000, of course, started the bear market that we're all very familiar with. It pulled back down here, garnered support on $6,000, which it eventually broke. And now we're sitting down here just above $3,000. So that's our little history lesson. Thank you all for watching. I want to, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, we have some technical analysis to do in today's video. I do want to dive into all the technical indicators, but I thought it was very important that you guys have a base. If you guys, for whatever reason, have never looked that far back on the charts, that's basically what Bitcoin has done over the last several years. And the first thing that I want to point out is the cyclical nature of markets. Like I said, I've talked about a lot of these things before, but I want to put them all in one video, so forgive me for repeating myself. But the first thing I want to mention is the cyclical nature of markets. The fact is, in any market, not just in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets, markets are going to be cyclical. And what does that mean? That basically means that markets are going to go into bull markets, they're going to go into bear markets, and then they're going to go into bull markets, and then they're going to go into bear markets. They're going to go into rallies and downtrends and rallies and downtrends. That's just how markets work. There are, there are essentially a lot of different waves put on top of 
each other. That's where Elliott wave theory comes from. There's a lot of different waves going on in markets, and you see that that kind of plays out in the cyclical nature of markets. You have these waves that you might consider a bear market and then a subsequent bull market, and then within the bear market, you have little mini bear markets or downtrends, as they're more commonly called, and then you have little mini bull markets or rallies, as they're more commonly called. And if you zoom in there to the hourly chart, which we can't do on this chart, but if you zoom into the hourly chart, you're going to see the same thing happening all the way down to the minute chart you're going to see that there's a cyclical nature of markets. That is true across every single market. You can find any market in existence, and if it has enough liquidity where there are actually people trading it and it's not some kind of like stable coin, it's going to be cyclical in some nature. You're going to see rallies and you're going to see downtrends. That's how that works. And the reason I stress that at the outset is because a lot of people are concerned about Bitcoin going to the floor and never recovering. A lot of people are very concerned about Bitcoin crashing and never bouncing back. And that's simply not how markets work, guys. The only reason that you would see something like that happen is that if everybody left the space, everybody stopped trading Bitcoin, everybody sold their Bitcoin, and the, and the space died. But guys, Bitcoin has been in a bear market for over a year now. Bitcoin entered its bear market on the 15th, 16th, 17th of December, somewhere around there, 2017, over a year ago. 14, 15 months later, Bitcoin is still in a bear market, but the development of Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, the blockchain industry is continuing to rise. Adoption is not really slowing down as much as you might have expected it to. The mainstream media attention has gone down, but that's not really a bad thing. Of course, we don't really like the mainstream media all that much. And overall, Bitcoin, just because it's crashed a little bit and just because we've had a bear market, that's not a bad thing, actually, guys, because guess what? You don't make money in bull markets. You make money in bear markets. Let me say that again. You don't make money in bear markets. Excuse me. You don't make money in bull markets. You make money in bear markets. And the reason for that is because you have to buy your Bitcoin somewhere. And right now, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do. But right now, I'd say it's a pretty good time to be buying long-term positions in Bitcoin and its cryptocurrency counterparts. With that out of the way, I put that at the outside of the video to quell any fears you guys might have about whether or not a bull run is coming because it's almost certain that a bull run is going to come at some point. I'd give it a 99% chance of happening in the next 12 months for the reasons I'm going to lay out in today's video. But even if it doesn't happen in the next 12 months, it's more than likely going to happen. It would be it would take some kind of cataclysmic event for Bitcoin to not enter a bull run in the future. So let's go ahead and start diving into the technical reasons why I believe a bull run is going to be happening in no particular order, but I do want to show all of them. That, and this is kind of one of those things where uh, if you guys have ever watched, um, if you guys have ever looked at the, the uh, you've probably never seen this, but if you've ever seen the, the similarities between Abraham Lincoln and um, John F. Kennedy, then you find that there's a lot of similarities between them. Like uh, Abraham Lincoln died in Ford th Ford's theater. John F. Kennedy died in a Ford automobile. Both of them have like seven letter last names. All that, you have, you have like 30 or 40 different parallels and it's all just a bunch of coincidences. Of course, you can draw those coincidences between anything, but a lot of times when you have many, many coincidences like that in technical analysis, it's not just something you want to wave off like you would between Abraham Lincoln and, and John F. Kennedy. You want to <clears throat> you want to actually use those coincidences because in cryptocurrency markets, in any markets, they're typically not coincidences. One of the first ones I want to show you is the retracement level from all-time high in the 2014-15 bear market. I forgot to mention most of the analysis for today's video is going to be based on back technical analysis on the 2014-15 bear market, extrapolating out to what's going to happen for the rest of 2019 on into 2020. Because so far, doing that has been a very good predictor of Bitcoin's, uh, Bitcoin's movements. The first thing that I want to point out is that Bitcoin retraced around 85% from its all-time high back over here in 2014 and 15. Bitcoin retraced from $1,200 all the way down here to around $180, $200, somewhere around there. It's about an 85% retracement. Bitcoin has done the exact same thing here in 2018 and 2019. Bitcoin has retraced almost exactly 85% from its all-time high. Similarly, Bitcoin retraced down to a flat level of support, which it subsequently broke. That level was $300 back over here. As we can see on this chart, Bitcoin pulled back to this level and set this as a level of support multiple times, three times, three major times and more times on the shorter term time frames. Bitcoin came down here to roughly $300 in that zone and set this as a level of support. And eventually, of course, Bitcoin broke that level of support spectacularly, pulling back 50% from that level of support. We pulled back about 45 to 50% from that level of support. Well, I, I and many other analysts have drawn an analogy between this level in between this level of $6,000. And interestingly enough, if you look here, Bitcoin pulled back 50% from $5, from $6,000. That's not where the parallels end though, because Bitcoin actually retraced from its all-time high down to this level, 75%. If we look back over here to 20, uh, 2018, Bitcoin retraced from all-time high down to this level, 70%. 70, 70 you guys start to see where these similarities come into play. Let's keep going here. I want to start showing you moving averages here. 
One of the first moving averages that I want to show you is actually the 20 weekly exponential moving average. You guys know I'm a big fan of this moving average. The 20, exp the 20 exponential moving average on just about any chart is a very, very good chart. It is a very good technical indicator to have. As we can see, when Bitcoin was in its bull run here and rallying very strongly, Bitcoin was above the 20 exponential moving average. And after it fell below it, this was right around the time that you could say that the, the Bitcoin bear market had started because for a little while here, you could have just called this a retracement and Bitcoin could have kept going. But right around the time that you would start saying that the bear market was definitely coming, was after we fell below that one uh, that 20 exponential moving average. A very similar thing happened over here on the 2018 market when Bitcoin fell below it here. Let's also come back to moving averages here. I want to show you some things on the uh, on the MACD, for example. Down here on the MACD, we see something interesting happen. At, right after Bitcoin fell below $300 right here, the MACD turned bullish. And just a couple months later, if we come here and we blow this up a little bit, you can see that the MACD right here just a couple weeks after we hit, uh, after we fell below three thousand dollars, right there, Bitcoin actually managed to uh, have a bullish cross on the MACD. Just a couple weeks after that, and the exact same thing has happened over here. Just a couple weeks after Bitcoin fell below six thousand dollars, we've seen a bullish cross on the MACD. Another thing I want to show you is out on the monthly chart with the RSI. Actually, it's on the weekly chart as well with the RSI. As we can see, after Bitcoin fell below $6,000 over here, Bitcoin's weekly RSI fell down to 30. If we look over here into this market in 2014 to 15, after we fell below $300, that analogous level of support, Bitcoin fell down to about 30 on the RSI. Out to the monthly chart. Guys, there's a lot of analogies here. We're not even close to done yet. If we look out here on the levels of support, Bitcoin in both bear markets right after falling below that analogous level of support fell down to about 40 on its monthly RSI. As we can see here, after Bitcoin fell down over here, Bitcoin fell to about 40 on the RSI. And right over here, Bitcoin fell to about 40 on the RSI. More things we want to look at on the monthly chart. I believe there's a signal on the MACD. I don't remember this one as well, but if we look on the MACD, then we'll see that Bitcoin turned bullish right over here in December of 2015, right after that uh, bull signal that I'll show you in a little while came. And it looks like we might be seeing some kind of bullish cross in the MACD in the next 12 months or so. As we can see, it's starting to curve back in on itself. We're seeing the histogram start closing for the first time that we've seen since the bear market began. The histogram has been getting more and more and more and more and more bearish, but in 2019 so far, it's been rallying to the upside, meaning that these two lines are coming closer together and that a cross is more likely. There are a lot of analogies, guys, here. Let's keep going. If we look on the daily chart, there are also some analogies with our moving averages. One of them that I want to show you has to do with the 200 weekly moving average. Let's go ahead and turn off all of these other moving averages really quickly so that we can see that one a little bit better. This is our 200 daily moving average. I said weekly a second ago, daily moving average here. As we can see right back over here, this has been a very important moving average for Bitcoin. After Bitcoin fell below it right over here, similar thing to the to the 20 weekly exponential moving average, we fell below it, bear market started. Right after we managed to get above it and stay above it right over here, this is right around the time period that the bull market started. I'll be coming back to this point here in just a second to explain why I believe the bull market is coming in the next year. Also, right over here, Bitcoin has found itself below the 200 exponential moving average for this entire bull market, uh, but for this entire bear market, if we manage to get above it, that's going to be very bullish for Bitcoin. Never once in the 2016-17 uh, bull market, all this time, never once did Bitcoin go below that moving average till the bear market started. More similarities, guys. There are a lot of them. I believe there's also one on the tw on the 20 exponential. No, there's not. Uh, like I said, there are so many of these that I'm having to remember a couple of them. But if we come here and we look at these other moving averages, there were some crosses on moving averages I talked about recently. I did not mean to cancel that. There were some crosses on moving averages that I want to talk about. One of them had to do with the, the 50 and the 100 on the daily chart, or actually on the weekly chart. So let's go ahead and bring those up. If we go out here to the weekly chart, then what we're going to see is that right around the time that this cross happened right over here. I went too far back. Right around this time that the 50 weekly moving average crossed below the 100 weekly moving average. The 100 is this gray line. The 50 is this red line. Right around the time the 50 crossed below the 100 weekly moving average, about six months after that, a bull market started. I actually did a video on this entire, I did a video specifically dedicated to this. You can watch that in the top right. And that was around this time. If we look right back over here and we look around uh, the current market, then we see that there's just recently been one of these crosses about six months after the last time this happened, a new Bitcoin bull market started. So that's a good signal. There are also many other things that I want to talk about with the lengths of these markets. If we come in here and we go back to the daily chart, and we grab our ruler here, we're going to see that the duration of this bear market from the time where we hit all time high all the way down to when we broke our level of support was about 336 days. If we look back in time over here, 
And then we're going to see it's around 300, it's around 280 to 300 days, if I remember correctly. Around 400 days, excuse me. I had, the, I had that backwards. Around 400 days, we saw Bitcoin last in this bull market, uh, in this bear market, excuse me. And then for the accumulation phase, we saw the accumulation phase lasted around 288 days, around 300 days. If we look at the ratios for that, now, I don't have them up on screen right now, but if we look at the ratios for how long the previous bear market lasted before we broke that level of support, and then how long the accumulation phase lasted, that puts a new bull market starting somewhere around this time period right over here, right before the end of 2019 on into early 2020. Guys, I think you're starting to get the point I'm trying to make, and the point I'm trying to make is that there are a lot of technical analogies between 2014-15 and 2018-19 bear markets. There are a lot of similarities, and in fact, there are so many similarities that for the last several months, we've been able to make predictions about this market based on what happened in this market over here. We've been able to use extrapolation of technical analysis from this market to go back and or to go forward and predict what's happened here in the last couple of months. Back over here, people were making predictions about breaking $6,000 based on the fact that Bitcoin broke $300 back over here. And while I wasn't one of them to make that prediction, I do see the, val the validity of it now. And I was mistaken for not putting more weight on that, which is why why I'm trying to give you guys the uh, I'm trying to give you guys as much information as I can about these two markets because they seem to be mirroring each other very very closely. Now, if Bitcoin goes and breaks some of this market structure that we've set up, like for example out here on the monthly chart, if we look at the 200 monthly exponential moving average, then we're going to see that that may be very bad for Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and get our uh, 200 back up. If we see that, excuse me, the 200 weekly, I believe it was, yeah. If we come back out here and we see the 200 weekly moving average, for example, if we see this get broken down here, this moving average is very important. It's used in a lot of different markets. For example, back over here, Bitcoin never actually fell below this. If we see Bitcoin go and break that level of support, then we're going to see a break of market structure. And 2014-15 bear market may not be a, a, a valid predictor for 2019 anymore. But so far... Bitcoin's uh, market performance in 2019 is still almost exactly mirroring what happened in 2015. And right now, it doesn't seem like there's a really good reason why that should change. And it does seem, based on what happened in 2014 and 15, that a new bull market will be starting in the next 12 months or so. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and see what technicals pointed to a new Bitcoin bull market starting in 2015 so that we know what to look out for in the future. If we look back over here to 2014 and 15, one thing we're going to see is it actually is on the weekly chart. I was on the right chart. If we look out here on the on the on the weekly chart right over here, back in 2015, what we'll see, and this is where we are in the market, uh, what we'll see is that right around the time that Bitcoin broke this two this uh, 20 weekly exponential moving average right here, that was right around the time the Bitcoin bull market started. And never once, nary a time, I sometimes say, did Bitcoin go back below this moving average before the bear market started. We've been below this moving average for the entirety of the bear market, but that moving average is curving down quickly. I think in the next several months, in the next two or three months even, Bitcoin's probably going to break this and either that's going to be the start of a bull market or more likely Bitcoin's going to fall over below that 200, uh, below that 20 weekly exponential moving average, something like this. And then later on in the year, probably in quarter four to maybe early quarter one of 2020, is Bitcoin going to actually get above that level? And that's going to be the start of a new bull market. I imagine we're going to see something like that play out. And guys, that's not the only technical indicator that showed when this bull market started. I believe it was also on the daily chart, if we come back here and we look, then we're going to see that there was another moving average. It was the 200 daily. This moving average was saw Bitcoin cross this moving average right around the time that that Bitcoin, that Bitcoin bull market started. And in fact, I made a video a long time ago about this moving average and why this signaled the beginning of the Bitcoin bull market that started in early 2015 and then lasted through 2016 and 17. This right here was the beginning of the bull market. This is the signal you want to be looking out for. The 200 daily moving average and the 20 exponential weekly moving average. These two moving averages, when Bitcoin crosses them, seems to be the moving averages those seem to be the moving averages that determine when a Bitcoin bull market starts. So if Bitcoin gets above both of these in the next year, which it most certainly looks like they will, so long as Bitcoin doesn't break $3,000, then that's probably going to be the beginning of a, bull, of a bull market. And guys, in today's video, I've been talking technicals. This is not even to mention the amazing fundamentals that are happening with Bitcoin right now. I'm very happy with the, with the state of the space. I'm very happy with the YouTube community, for example. I think we're having a bullish impact on the market, being able to teach more people about the market and retaining more people in the market from leaving because I think a lot of people would be very lost. But um, 
I really think the technicals are showing things are looking very bullish for Bitcoin in the next year. And I think the fundamentals are looking very bullish for Bitcoin in the next year. And I do believe that a Bitcoin bull market is coming in the next year. Now, guys, I've rambled on a long time for this video, so I'm going to wrap it up here. We're not quite done, though, because I do have something else I want to talk about. But before I do that, tell me what you think in the comments section down below of the technical analysis in today's video. Tell me what you think about the idea of a bull market starting in the next 12 months or so. Like I said, I tried to get to as many technicals as I possibly could in today's video, but I simply couldn't cover all of them. I try to get to as many of them as I can, though. But anyway, like I said, tell me in the comment section down below what you think of that. Where do you think Bitcoin is heading over the next 12 months? Do you think a bull market is coming soon? I'm interested, as always, to hear your opinions in the comment section down below. And I'll also be interested to hear your opinions in the first cohort. Do you like that segue? I was very happy with that. Anyway, guys, this is the group that I've been talking about launching for a couple of days now. And I've been wanting to do this for over a year. If you guys are in the Discord server, then you'll probably notice that there was a, a subset of people that had the role first cohort. And I always wanted to make a uh, always wanted to make a dedicated chat group for that. But now I've finally gone ahead and done that. And the first cohort is basically going to be, as I said here, a community for cryptocurrency enthusiasts. So what this is is going to be a thirty dollar a month group that you guys can join. And before you start asking why is it thirty dollars a month, Jeb? Why isn't it free? Well, it's thirty dollars a month that narrow down the number of people that are going to be in the group. That's one of the big reasons why. I've done that is simply to lower the number of people and make it more exclusive because we have 2,000 members in the Crypto Jeb Discord server and I, unfortunately I'm not able to get to know every single one of you individually but I want to be able to get to know every single person in this chat group individually talk to you guys on a one-on-one -on -one basis teach you about technical analysis learn about technical analysis from you because I am by no means the I'm by no means uh, all knowing in the in the realm I want to learn from you guys. I want to teach you guys. I want to get, uh, be updated. Sometimes there's a news story that I didn't hear about. Maybe you guys can tell me about it. Uh, in this group, uh, we're going to be talking about this here. Uh, there's going to be twice weekly calls with me. Those are probably going to last about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how much time I have. Guys, I am very busy. So we're going to have two to, uh, twice weekly calls there that I'm going to try to do where you guys can come and talk to me directly and you'll you'll hear my voice and I will hear your voice. That's kind of how voice calls work. We're going to be talking about literally anything under the sun, guys. I do want to stress that this is not a trading group. This is not a signals group, although there will be discussion about trading and there will be discussion about signals and technical analysis. That is not the purpose of this group. The purpose of this group is for building community to learn from each other and also sometimes to share our technical analysis and also share our signals. That is not the only, nor is it the main purpose of this group, though I do want to put that disclaimer out there. We're going to have dedicated voice chats and dedicated chat rooms. Guys, I'm really looking forward to this. I've been talking about it with you guys over the last couple of days on a couple of different platforms. Some of you guys in the Discord server, some of you guys in the community tab, and I mentioned it in a video earlier. I'm very much looking forward to this, guys. So if you're interested in joining the first cohort, go ahead and click the link in the description down below. Come on and join in. In the first cohort, there will be a video showing you exactly how to log into uh, how to make an account for download login and join the first cohort on discord if you haven't already made a discord account there's a video in the course or well in the course that's attached to this showing you exactly how to do that guys like i said i'm super excited for this i'm really looking forward to what we have to offer here i'm really looking forward to the community we build and i'm really looking forward to getting to know you guys even better because i i hate to say it but it's really hard to get to know you guys individually because at this point, there's so many of you, which is absolutely flattering, but it does make it kind of hard. So that's why I'm really looking forward to this. I want to get a couple hundred people in here so that we can, or not even a couple hundred people, really. I'd like to keep it smaller than that so that we can really get to know each other. Anyway, guys, that is basically going to do it for today's video. Tell me in the comments section down below what you think of the technical analysis in today's video. And let me know if you're going to be joining the first cohort. I know there are several people that are already going to be joining. They've told me so. So we should have several people, probably a couple dozen people join in the first day. We'll see what happens there, guys. Anyway, uh, anyway, guys, I know how to do my own outro. Anyway, guys, that is basically going to do it for today's video. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.